Hey guys, what's up? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and today's video is all about JavaScript. It's a JavaScript primer video. And what I mean by primer is we're gonna take a 10,000 foot view of JavaScript, explain what it is, where you can find it, what other, what the software development community thinks about it, and maybe why you should learn it. I've had a lot of people ask questions about specific programming languages in previous videos and in comments, so I figure why not take some time to give sort of a overview of uh, each programming language, and so I'm creating this primer series. Now, the ideal person to be watching this is somebody who's just starting out, who's a beginner, who's brand new to sort of software development or web development in general, and that way I can kind of guide you sort of uh, just tell you a little bit about what JavaScript does and maybe how it fits in in all the sort of development, software development universe. All right, so let's just get right into it. What is JavaScript? Well, where should we start here? Let's start with uh, the internet. So <laughs> JavaScript has been called the language of the web. And the reason it's called the language of the web is because pretty much everywhere you go, every website you visit will use JavaScript in some sort of meaningful way to make that web page dynamic. Let's take a very typical scenario of where you're going to your favorite website. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, andysterkowitz.com or something like that. But uh, each website will serve up a few files. But let's say it's a very basic scenario. You're, you're where a website's gonna serve up an index.html page and a script.js page. Now the index.html page is serving up basically HTML to the browser. And HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, which just essentially means it's the it's telling the browser, it's, it's like the skeleton of the page, right? It's gonna tell the browser where to place different items. It's gonna tell the browser what to show in terms of initial data. In other words, maybe it's got a title, it's got a body paragraph, et cetera, et cetera. But that HTML page is very limited in what it can do because it can really only show static, meaning never changing data. Now by itself, obviously that HTML page is nice and all, you can show people some information, but by itself it can't, it's pretty limited in what it can do. So say you wanted to grab information from a server, say you wanted to grab information from Twitter and display some tweets, some live tweets uh, on your web page. You can't do that alone with HTML, it doesn't have the built-in functionality to go out and do that. That's where JavaScript, JavaScript can come into play. It can turn your static website, your static HTML site, into a dynamic site. JavaScript is actually able to manipulate what is you are looking at on the website by being able to access the HTML's DOM, which is the document object model, which basically is the programmatic sort of data that tells JavaScript what is not only on the page, what's currently the page looks like, but it gives it access to change things on the page. Now that information, that DOM information is available through an API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. Now, really you don't need to know what an API is other than it's sort of the opening to control some of the, the things on the HTML page. Again, that's something that you'll probably learn more when you actually decide you're gonna learn JavaScript. Beyond that, JavaScript has loads of potential functionality that you can use with it. So in the example that I used before, accessing Twitter, not only can you potentially access Twitter programmatically, meaning if you, you can connect to their API, their application programming interface and access t tweets directly, you can also access a server that you are running where you can send it some information and it can send you information back and the, the work to connect to Twitter or whatever outside sort of data service that you need, it can do the work server side and return it to JavaScript. But JavaScript has that functionality in it to sort of access web services, process information, it's really limited to your creativity of what you want to do with it. You can even create a video game like I did for my first app, which is available up here. All right, so we know that JavaScript is used to help make HTML pages dynamic, but where else is it used? It is not limited to the browser. There are so many places it's used now, there's really a massive JavaScript universe. The first place that uh, most people who work with JavaScript may be familiar with is the area of web frameworks. Now, web frameworks built with JavaScript are so common nowadays that the running joke is that there's a new sort of framework available every day. And it's true, there are tons of JavaScript frameworks. You might have heard of AngularJS, ReactJS, Backbone, uh, Vue is another one that's fairly recent. 
and plenty more, by the way. There's plenty, plenty more. But a JavaScript framework essentially is a framework that helps people to, or helps developers to build apps. It does a lot of what you would call the heavy lifting of an application. Now, each framework is different, but essentially many of them cover some of these sort of, sort of things that you may want to do. So things like routing, in other words, going from page to page of the application, displaying different components of the app. That's something that can be very tedious, but that some of the frameworks will do for you. Another one is uh, connecting to data services. So connecting to your backend servers, uh, serializing or deserializing the information, uh, being able to keep track of authentication and security tokens. A lot of these frameworks make that a whole lot easier. And it means you won't have to sort of roll or create your own framework or little module for functionality for every app that you create. Now look, the topic of JavaScript frameworks could really take its own video. So suffice to say that it is, if you're gonna become a web developer, it's gonna be something that you're gonna learn a lot about and something that you should probably learn about if you want to learn JavaScript. JavaScript's also available as a server-side language in Node.js, which allows you to create a basically server-side functionality using JavaScript. So you could have a potentially front end with JavaScript and back end with JavaScript. Even more than that, JavaScript's available as a database language. There are two that come to mind right away. It's MongoDB and CouchDB that use JavaScript as their programming language as well. So really you can have a entire stack from front to back end be JavaScript. Do you wanna create a mobile app potentially? Well, JavaScript actually allows you to do that as well. I've actually used in the past, I've used Ionic, which is a sort of a framework that will allow you to create a mobile app using Angular essentially. And we'll take that and sort of, uh, how would you say it? It will create a, a, a mobile app for both Android and iOS that is sort of like it's, um, it, it looks and feels like a mobile app, but it's really just rendering sort of HTML and JavaScript. Now that's not the same as creating an iOS app in, an, in the native language, but it can be sort of a substitute if you don't have a, a mobile developer uh, that, that you, can, you can obviously access. So it's definitely not the same as creating a mobile app, but you can definitely get decently close to it. And lastly, you can actually create desktop apps using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS with a framework called Electron. So you could create a sort of full-fledged desktop app that people can use on Windows. Uh, and I think I iOS, I'm pretty sure with iOS, with using the Electron framework. So go ahead and check that out as well. But essentially, all you have to really know is that JavaScript really is being used a lot everywhere. So it's moved far beyond its humble origins in the browser, just manipulating uh, sort of the, the, the HTML on the page. All right, so now you know a little bit about how JavaScript works, you know where it's used. The question you might be thinking is, why should I learn JavaScript? And that's a good question to ask. I am a huge fan of JavaScript from the perspective of a first programming language. I created a video here that has my top three programming languages and it is definitely number one. The basis of my reasoning for that is that JavaScript is so simple to get up and running for a beginner. So if you want to go and get started right now, all you need is a text editor and a browser. And to just start messing around with JavaScript, all you really need is a browser. And you can open up the developer tools and start working in the console right away. Beyond that, there are, I think JavaScript is a syntactically, the syntax of a language is pretty easy to pick up for, for, for beginners. So you add those two reasons. It is not a perfect programming language, so there are some quirks with it. And I think that there are a number of good programming languages to learn as a beginner for the first time. I just happen to pick JavaScript. It's by no means the best, so don't worry. If you pick Python or something else with C Sharp or Java, they're all great languages to learn, but it's just my personal recommendation. Now the next question to ask is, what does the software development community think about JavaScript? JavaScript is surprisingly a very polarizing language. Now there, it's so widely used now, so massively uh, adopted by, you know, tons of companies are using you know, JavaScript for web frameworks. They're using, you know, JavaScript as a server-side language with Node, as a backend, uh, you know, as a database, I should say. So people have really bought into JavaScript, but there's no doubt, and so a lot of people love it, but there's no doubt that there's a lot of hatred towards it because, well, let's put it this way. If you've been programming JavaScript for any amount of time, there you will encounter some of the most frustrating things ever from all the way from naming, so capitalization issues. So say you name a variable Andy and you lowercase it, and then when you go to find it, it's a different case, it will break your application. It can be almost impossible to figure out why. Uh, it depends on the, you know, the complexity of your application. But 
there are so many little sort of gotchas and weird quirks about the language that many people honestly just don't like. I work also in C Sharp, so I work on the backend language, and that's a strongly typed language, meaning that any sort of uh, errors in the syntax are strict. There are, if you forget a semicolon, the entire application will not build into a, a, an executable program that you can use. JavaScript, on the other hand, is not like that at all. JavaScript is an interpreted language. So that means that the browser will simply read your JavaScript and even if there are errors, it will not sort of tell you about it until it goes to actually run the code and then it realizes that, hey, there's a missing bracket or semicolon or something like that. So it can be a little bit more frustrating for developers. And so that's why people will give it a lot of criticism. At the end of the day, it's widely adopted. If the better programming language for the browser comes along, I'll happily adopt that. But until then, we've got JavaScript, we've got a lot of frameworks, and I don't know, that's as far as I think about it. All right, so let's cover some commonly asked questions about JavaScript. Are Java and JavaScript the same? Java and JavaScript are not the same. Uh, despite the closeness of naming, they are not the same at all. JavaScript was actually, its syntax was based off of Java, which at the time of JavaScript's creation was one of the hottest programming languages. But just despite their namesake and despite, I guess, their, some of their similarities in syntax, they are absolutely not the same. Do not confuse the two. They are completely separate languages. Do I need to know HTML and CSS before I start with any JavaScript? The short answer would be no. You don't really need to know HTML and CSS, but the long answer is yes, you definitely do. Because JavaScript can be run by itself right now. I could have you open up a browser, open up the developer tools and start you know, messing around with JavaScript. But JavaScript is complementary to HTML and CSS. And if you're gonna become a JavaScript developer, there's a good chance you're gonna to need to do web development in general, meaning work with HTML and CSS. So definitely you should learn HTML and CSS. But one of the mistakes I, I sort of get a sense that people make when they, when they hear that you have to learn HTML and CSS before learning JavaScript is that they have to somehow become masters at HTML and CSS. My recommendation has always been the same. Learn the basics, learn the fundamentals of HTML and CSS, be able to do a few things. But once you've picked up HTML and CSS, then move on to JavaScript. You do not need to become a master, you do not need to become uh, you know, a wizard of HTML and CSS, because that is, you can potentially get really crafty with it. And you don't have to become very crafty to know how to use JavaScript to work with HTML and CSS. So don't, don't break your back learning it, but definitely learn it and then move on to JavaScript. Next question, I wanna learn JavaScript, what should I do? That is a question for a whole nother video. I really hate breaking down into like three steps that you should do to learn JavaScript. But I learned JavaScript by reading the headfirst JavaScript book. That was my introduction to it. That's my recommendation. I'll include a link to that in the description below. But other than that, I would say if you first learn JavaScript, either use the headfirst book or tutorials online. Once you've sort of gotten a good grasp on JavaScript, assuming by the way, you've learned a little bit of HTML and CSS as well you're gonna to want to build a complex application. By complex, I mean complex and challenging for you, not necessarily complex like you have to build the next Facebook. But you're gonna build an app that is, is challenges your skills and that you can use in your portfolio eventually to, to try and get jobs. You can use that as showing off sort of your skills. Say so once you've built a, an app using JavaScript, then it's probably a, ta that, a good time to learn uh, a web framework such as Angular, React, just go ahead and pick one. And, doesn't really matter, just pick one of the more popular ones, I'd say, and then build another app in that. Once you're there, then it's probably a good time to sort of evaluate your skills. Talk to, you probably wanna get some sort of mentor in the field, uh, who's in the field, who can give you a sense of where you should go next. Because once you've done all that, you're, you've done a pretty good job and you know JavaScript to a decent degree and it's time for the next challenge, which you can probably figure out at that point. And one more note too, just real quick about the headfirst JavaScript book before I forget. If you are going to do that book, which I highly recommend because it's a great sort of anti-textbook, right? Like it's not a dry and boring textbook, which is gonna make you hate programming. I highly recommend that you do every single activity. Don't be that person who thinks you're like too good to you know, do all the little dorky activities, but those activities are there for you to sort of cement in your learning. And I recommend that book all the time and I just, I always have to put that caveat in there because it's super important to make sure that everybody's doing all that. So if you decide to get the book, do all the activities. All right, so that is it for my JavaScript primer video. What did you think about that? Did I 
answer all of your burning questions about JavaScript? Do you gen genuinely feel that I covered enough of it to help you to understand sort of the, you know, again, the 10,000 foot view of JavaScript? If you didn't, please let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm totally serious. I love uh, to hear your feedback. I want to make really good videos in the future. I'm going to be making more primer videos on different programming languages. So please give me that feedback. If you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe below here. Uh, click the bell icon if you want to get notifications whenever a video comes out. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and peace out.